Jimmy. Mommy. Jimmy. Mommy. Jimmy, do you want to come downstairs for some fried rice with chicken and vegetables and soy sauce? Hold the soy sauce, the chicken, and the vegetables and the fried rice. Mommy. That's my favorite. I'll be right downstairs. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. Yes, my name is Jason Rothman. Welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. As always, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. There we I'm go. Joined by the <laughs> great, well, welcome back to the Paid Search go. Podcast, the great <laughs> Chris Schaefer. Chris, you've got a very good looking professional shirt on today. Yeah. But the, the mm-hmm. sleeves are rolled up, so you're ready yeah. to do some work. How's it going yeah. today? Yeah, so I'm ready to chop wood, but also have a presentation at the same time. So yeah, I'm uh, welcome back to the Pay Search Podcast. Um, it feels like a while uh, since we've talked, but it's been a week. Um, but I've missed you. I'm glad to be here watching you eat on camera (laughs) because you didn't you always like sneak in lunch right before we eat do you know do you do you like squeeze in work it's you're like oh no recording time and you're like i forgot to eat lunch is that i have i have every every single minute of the work day (laughs) scheduled (laughs) by my executive assistants my team of them ah that's what it's all it's all a big joke to you isn't Mm -hmm. it chris oh yeah maybe maybe the audience too oh jason talks about his house jason talks about his business jason Mm -hmm. talks about how successful he is yeah yeah, I guess it's all just a little joke for you guys, but you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea who you're talking to every week, Chris. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. I all, all all I've heard is you're the man that gets the gun pointed at his head. That's what I imagine. Just you running around Used sweating, to. and you know, I was I was thinking about it last night, Chris. I I've seen inside your house. Mm-hmm. I've seen lots of different parts of your life. I know about places you go to vacation, all that kind of stuff, and what you do in your free time. Yep. And I can picture it in my head because you share pictures with me and text. And Not all because that. you've ever and stuff. come to see me, but because I share. Yeah, you share. Mm-hmm. You don't know anything about me. No, I don't. <laughs> what is my house like? You have no idea. I, what, do, what do I do in my free You have no idea. I've seen your kitchen. I've seen a glimpse of your living room. I've seen the table that you sit at with your laptop to work. But yeah, no. You don't ever send me pictures. I don't know what to think about it. I don't bring it up because it, it hurts. You know, I mean, I send you pictures of me, my family, trying to include you. And then you just get. I like when you send me videos of you doing CrossFit. <laughs> no, I've never done that. I've never. I have and then ne- you, and then And then, like we talked about, you layer on the music and then you put your face <laughs> up in the camera. And you're like, here we go, guys. Here we go. <laughs> I have never recorded myself. That's not true. I recorded myself one time when I got my very first uh, muscle up. I recorded myself then. But other than you that. You do CrossFit today? Oh, oh, is the sun out? Wow. Mm. <laughs> what'd you wear? Let's leave it at that. Just tell me what you wear and then I'll drop it. What, what'd you wear today? Shorts and a very tight shirt, <laughs> I guess. A real tight shirt <laughs> with sleeves or no sleeves? Oh, I always wear sleeves. I'm not a no sleeves kind of guy. It's kind of gross. You know, girls can go sleeveless. But guys are, you know, is. Did you wear, um, was it cotton, like a cotton t shirt, or was it some kind of like performance athletic shirt? Yeah, like a wicking. Like those are so cool. The wicking kind of athletic shirt. They're really neat. And then on the shorts, covered the kneecap or above the kneecap? Oh, above. Yeah, above. I used to do lower, like below the knee. In terms of inches above the kneecap? No, we'll leave it. We'll leave some mystery out there for the audience. <laughs> Too much. Too much. <laughs> Chris, I went to I went to Catholic school, Chris, and it was it was a thing. They had to measure how low the skirts went. It was like a rule. Yep. Yeah. I imagine yeah. My my daughter's in private school now. So she has that very specific little um uniform that she wears. So yeah, I'm starting to imagine Jason in a you send me one of those, Jason. Send me in a, a skirt. No, yeah, in a skirt. <laughs> I'm sure you chose. He's like, no, I don't want to wear that. I want to wear that. <laughs> no, uh, we we wore ties and we wore blazers. Send me a and it was send me a baby a picture of you in your uniform. I want to see that. Share your life with me, please. Okay, I will. Okay, good. I'll be waiting for that. 
So, Chris, a lot of people get on here, and uh, I've seen some comments lately. They're uh, saying, hey, love the show, and they get in the Patreon group, and they're like, but I'm more of a new beginner in Google Ads, and I'm not into these advanced topics like we just talked about for the last 10 minutes, the advanced topics yeah, that we exactly. talk Super about deep. here on the show that have to do with <laughs> Google Ads. Yeah. And they're like, where can I get some beginner info? And then people tell them, well, hey, the first 100 episodes, they didn't talk about skirts and ties and CrossFit and right. athletic leisure shirts and all that kind of stuff. They talked about keywords and bidding and settings and very straightforward Google Ads things. So if you want those kind of more for beginner episodes, we have the first 100 episodes available for sale for a very low price. At our store, you can go to paidsearchpodcast.com and go to the archive section and purchase those episodes. We also do a weekly after show where instead of talking about Google Ads topics like we did for the last 10 minutes, we talk about some personal things like we did not do for the last 10 minutes. And we also talk about some business of Google Ads, business of PPC topics quite a bit. And we also talk about some new advanced features in Google Ads that we're kind of exploring and feeling out. That's a weekly after show on Patreon, very, very inexpensive, and we give you four episodes a month. Check out that at paidsearchpodcast.com. And Chris, later today, when we record that, we will be talking about oh. some breaking news when it comes to oh. I get to make the phone calls in Google Ads, okay. and I'll leave it at that. I get to make the old sound like I used to, the uh, breaking news sound. That'll be fun. So, yeah, uh, that'll be that'll be great. So, well, let me tell you guys about another tip that many of our patrons and our regular listener listeners use all the time. I hear about it; they love it. It's called Optio, O P T E O dot com slash P S P. Two. Very important that you go to that URL because there is an eight-week free trial of, and this is why people like it, it's a tool to help you get more done in Google Ads, okay? The number one thing that people have an issue with is, what do I do now? And how can I get more ideas to improve but not bog down my entire day by digging through metrics coming up with new ideas, how can I establish a process and then make that process 10 times faster? Optio is the tool for you. This is designed for freelancers like me, like Jason, uh, freelancers out there like you, agencies who have a bunch of people that are working on a bunch of accounts. The whole thing scales to help you get more done and get your get help your employees get more done faster in Google Ads. So be sure and check them out, optio.com slash PSP2 for an eight-week free trial. That's four weeks longer than everyone else gets exclusively from the Pay Search Podcast. So use that URL, use a little chat box, tell them, hey, I'd like an extra four weeks, please, and they will deliver. Thanks, guys. Back to you, Jason. Thanks, Chris. So we have a very interesting episode today. It's going to hit the Google Ads managers right in their sweet spots, and it's also <laughs> going to hit some uh, business owners out there who have wondered this question and um, are trying to figure this out. So it's a, it's a good episode for everybody. I was in the Patreon Facebook group, mm -hmm. one of the perks of Patreon this week, uh, talking with other professionals, and one of the questions on there was, uh, if a client wants me to pause their ads for a certain period of time because they're too busy... I wonder if it's more advantageous to just go with a much lower target CPA, meaning bidding, instead of pausing everything. Mm -hmm. And that got me thinking, wow, someone else is dealing with that. I deal with that all the time, too. And yeah. that's one of the interesting things about the Facebook group. We all find out, wow, we all deal with the same kind of issues over and over. Let's, uh, let's maybe get better and better at dealing with them. And so it made me think, yeah, this is something I, I hear about a lot. And what we're going to talk about today, the way we're going to kind of frame it is how to slow your role in Google Ads. Maybe that's a good title. Mm. And it the scenario is this, Chris, and I want to know if you've heard this from your clients and how often. For whatever reason, you have an advertiser who wants to, their, their word to you is turn off Google Ads. And maybe you don't think it's the best idea to turn it off. You think it's better to lower it in terms of spend. So for whatever reason, a client, an advertiser, they're busy. Their calendar of all their booked out 
month, their jobs is full. They don't think they can take on more work or they're going on vacation or part of their staff is going on vacation or a global pandemic happens (laughs) and Mm -hmm. they want to spend less money on advertising. And there's a crunch, a cash crunch. And so for whatever reason, they're like, hey, Chris, I think I need to slow things down. So my question to you is, do you get that question from time to time from clients? And when they ask it, for whatever the reasons are that we just talked about, when they ask it, does it do you kind of hear in their voice that they don't really want to turn off Google Ads, but they're asking you to? Mm. Is that the kind of vibe you get? I definitely get that. I actually got one this week. It was it was a new thing that I'd never gotten. They, they were in uh, they were investing money temporarily into um, a Kickstarter campaign that they were doing, and they they wanted to divert some of their funds. So really good reason, you know, it wasn't because they were too busy, but it was because they they temporarily wanted to try uh, pushing a whole bunch of advertising into some things they were doing for Kickstarter, a separate project. Um, and yes. I, I mean, I just listened to him. I'll tell you what I did. I mean, I just listened to him and was like, okay, you know, you, I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on or, you know, how much you're spending or, you know, how important it is that we spend nothing in Google ads, but I guess I'll just shut it off. And that's what I did, you know? And so this, for me, this will be great because this will put something in my arsenal for immediately coming back with a list of ideas. We could do this, 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 or this, because I'm guilty of just following instructions. And that's not really the best thing for a Google ads manager to do is to just listen and obey. Well, it can, it can be spun two different ways. So the first way people can spin it. And so the overall point of this episode is instead of shutting off things completely and pausing that campaign, slow your roll. There's ways to slow your roll, to slow down the spend and still get some good results from Google ads. Now, the first way to look at that from a Google Ads manager perspective is, oh, well, you don't get paid unless your clients are running ads on Google, so you want them to run ads on Google. I I get that point of view. Um, I don't get paid when my clients don't run ads. I, I prorate their month mm-hmm. for that part of the month they don't run. I, and if we don't run the full month, I don't charge them anything. I talk to other Google Ads managers. That's not what everybody does, by the way. Yeah. Some people, if you run... The first second of the month, they charge you for a full month. Oh. Some people, if you want to just keep a relationship with them, they're, they're going to charge you because they tie, uh, they have a lot of things that go into managing account administratively that are not just Google ads in the account. Mm. And why do they want to answer your emails? Why do they want to be available to you if you're not paying them a fee? So it's not always the case that the spigot gets shut off when the Google ads campaign gets shut off for a manager, but there definitely is something to, oh, well, you want Google ads to run. So you get paid. Well, yeah, that's the service we offer. But the other way to look at it is Google ads should be profitable. It should be helping your business. There should be a consequence, a negative consequence, Mm -hmm. besides me just spanking you. If you turn off your Google ads campaign, it should hurt your business. So if that's the case, let's not hurt your business. Let's slow things down. Let's manage through this period, whatever the reason is you want to lower things. And let's slow our role. Let's lower things. So just some arguments, Chris, to, to, to frame this the right way, to start off on the right footing here in terms of why you wouldn't want to shut off completely. I'm going to run through these one by one, and I want to get your take on them, yeah, your hot take. Yeah. The reasoning to just lower things and not shut off completely, and then we'll talk about how you lower things. So I think it's a 100%. If you plan to come back on Google Ads, you should be continuing to run Google Ads. You shouldn't stop things. No, number one, we can still gather data. Hmm. Does that resonate with you as a Google Ads manager? Does that mean anything to you? Anything important? Still gathering data? Um, I mean, if you're going, f- you know, from full 100% spin down to 10%, I don't know if that one registers so much as far as a reason, because the the amount of data would be really small, and you know, I I don't know. That one's not selling me. Well, it sells me. You know why? Because you can continually get. of your search terms. You can continually get placements from a remarketing campaign and try to find those granular placements that you actually want to target as placements, those golden nuggets. They happen from time to time. And you can still gather data. You can still gather data about cost per click, cost per conversion, um, and then also the performance on the website. So I do like the idea of continually gathering data. Um, And just look at it this way, Chris. 
how much more confidence do you feel in an account that you've been managing for a year? Yeah. Okay. Every week, feeling out the changes of that account, gathering data, knowing what to bid, all that kind of stuff versus starting a new campaign tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, do you not feel more confident a year in? Sure. Sure. I mean, I'm... Okay. So why is that? Because we gather data. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I imagine you have some other reasons, but I feel like you started off with the weakest. Let's, let's go heavier from here. You know what, Chris? Uh, <laughs> debates are very fresh in people's minds. <laughs> and if if you want me to go there, I'll go there, okay? <laughs> now, Chris, you can go. Yeah, so I'm not in the this is not a great debate, buddy. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. This is Well, uh, you just wanted my hot is, take. Uh, I just This is this is a march. Just, no, no, no. <laughs> this is not a hot take. Even though I said hot. This is a march along. Oh, okay. <laughs> and serve the primary podcast Sorry. owner's needs. Sorry, sir. To Sorry. be <laughs> to be seen as correct. I thought, I thought I was going to do hot takes. Okay, sorry. Thank you, sir. May I have another? That's how you ask for the next topic, <laughs> right. not it's a week that argument was, next. What a great so, idea, Jason. What's the next one? There's a difference between turning off a budget and lowering a budget. Mm. And you know how low you can go with the budget? It's like limbo or whatever that game is. You can go super low. Oh, uh, yeah. I use, yeah. This is a strong point, Chris. There's no reason to turn off a campaign yep. if you can run it five dollars a day. If you can run a remarketing at one dollar a day yep. and seriously still get placement ideas, run a search campaign at ten at five dollars a day. Say your cost per click for your industry is one or two dollars. Get a couple clicks a day. Mm -hmm. You can go low with the budget. What business can't afford two, three hundred dollars a month on Google Ads? Please, sure. Please back me up on that. Oh no, that one I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. Absolutely. I think shutting things off entirely doesn't make sense uh, because you know a couple bucks a day can get a if few you plan clicks. to come back on it doesn't if make you plan sense. yeah if Shutting you plan to come entirely, back on yeah. if you plan to come back on right. basically never makes sense because we have control over going with a super low budget and we can go super low now let me ask seasonally I work I've worked with a lot of clients that are seasonal they you know maybe up in uh, the northern states they deal with yardscaping or landscaping or you well, you're know. trying you're trying to steal clients right now Chris I've got a great client longtime <laughs> client I charge them <laughs> pennies on the dollar because they were one of my first clients and not only that I learned a lot about business from them I was charging low rates five six years ago mm -hmm. and my low rates were not good enough. They were a businessman and they negotiated on low rates just because I threw something out there and they go, hey, I really want to work with you, but I'm going to need it at this level. Oh. And so not only did they lock in my low rates from five years ago, they locked in basically half those rates because they asked <laughs> and I was a desperate young man at the point <laughs> and I've kept them at the same time. And you know what? They're a outdoor kind of space company. Yep. In the north, yep. and the the volume definitely goes down when it gets cold. So please don't talk about them oh, like that. I'm so, so sorry, I didn't realize that was such a. Sore don't use topic. examples. <laughs> yeah, great client though, great client, but man, man they get a deal. Man, are they, <laughs> man, are they raking me over the coals? <laughs> I love that. I'm definitely going to bring that up again. So yes, Chris, volume goes down, and so what's your point that that you're going to have to pause at some point because there's it does it, clients want to pause when the when they're out of season? Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering. Oh my God, that's what this client does. By the way, he doesn't run for like four months of the year, and I don't get paid. So not only do I get paid a smaller amount than I used to, pennies on the dollar. You don't now, even get a full year. He doesn't run for four months of the year because it's cold, and people he thinks uh, they don't do business. But the thing is. Yes, I'm not a I'm not a psychopath here. I'm not going to say run Google Ads forever. There's never a reason you should turn it off. Well, here's here's something with the seasonality. Let let the market dictate that. So if your business is still open, if you're not shutting your business doors, right. if you're still able to take customers, Google users will tell you if they want to buy your products and how much your budget should be in this example in those colder months because we there has been some times where he didn't tell us to pause during the winter and we kept running. Spend went down to like ten or twenty percent. Sure, of normal it should spend. naturally. Uh, yeah. And and it was just because of volume. But you know what? Some people were still doing those searches. Maybe they, who knows? Maybe they wanted to buy supplies for later in the year. Mm. Maybe they wanted to have this kind of product, even if it's cold and still hard to work with. So, it, spend went down naturally. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say necessarily seasonality is a reason to close. If your business is still open, just let the market kind of dictate how much you spend on advertising, how much volume is there. Now, this is my strongest point, Chris, in terms it. of why you should lower things. I knew it was coming. 
and not completely turn it off. And maybe this doesn't apply to you because maybe you're not as good as me at managing Google Ads accounts. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's not saying much because no one on planet Earth is as good as me hmm. at managing Google Ads accounts. Uh-huh. Maybe that's not saying much because no one on planet Earth is as smart as me. Oh, wow. Generally. Still going. Open statement there. <laughs> open to interpretation. Chris, I, w- I would be impressed if this hits, hits home with you. But this is kind of a uh, – let me phrase this the right way. Turning off a campaign versus lowering the budget prevents losing overall momentum mm. slash muscle memory yep. for managing that particular account. Are you going to say that doesn't mean anything? Or are you going to step up to the plate and say you also are one of the best Google Ads managers on the planet? And even though that sentence doesn't mean anything because it's very vague, that language, mm-hmm. it means a whole lot to <laughs> all-star Google Ads managers. Right. Which side are you on? Right. Um, okay. I'm not going to take the bait for uh, for that. I'm gonna, but I do. I really. I'm going to point out first that you're absolutely what you, right. What are you? What are you? A fish? You're a big mouth bass. What are you talking about with the bait? <laughs> this is a real thing. Do you, overall, oh, no, no. I'm talking about the momentum, best, the best thing. We're talking about the best. So I'm not going to do that. So, oh, you are one of the best Google Ads managers well, on the well, planet. That's okay. We, you're the great Chris Schaefer. Right. We'll just see. I and many others learn from you on a weekly basis. Thank you're you. incredible. How many times have I had to pick my jaw up off the floor on this podcast because you find some little thing in Google Ads about automated extensions? What was going on with that last week in Patreon? That was kind of crazy. Yeah. And we figured out how to yeah. uh, manage those. Go ahead. All right. So losing momentum, absolutely. That's the. I think that's huge, huge. And and it it often the times I regret the most pausing a campaign because it's almost like once you pass a certain number of days, the engine cools and it's hard to come back uh, to what you were doing before. You may turn it back on and suddenly your CPCs that were at a certain level no longer reach the same search impression share. They no longer reach the same positioning. You know, it still runs at the same CPC, but it's not as uh, it's not as potent as it was before. So that's huge. Now, on the other point, I think that's really cool how you mentioned muscle memory for managing a particular account. That is a great point because if you're going into account, and this is talking more to the managers themselves or the business owners that are doing it themselves, if you're going into account on a regular basis, it becomes part of your process. You know what to check. You know what you last changed. You know what to look out for. You know what your hot points are right now for this week or this month, what what kind of things you're testing. Turn that off for a month or three weeks or something like that, and then come back to it. You're kind of like, well, you might have been in the middle of an experiment. You might have had some test keywords. You might have been doing some bidding shifts. You may have forgotten you turned something on or off. I think that's huge. Um, that's not something that you necessarily could communicate to the business owner, but if you're the manager, I absolutely identify with that. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the reasons why if I'm managing a big account, big for the client, big for myself, and then all of a sudden they want to stop for a month or whatever, I don't care about that one month of fees. Like I'm going to be okay. And I plan on them being a long-term client anyway. Yeah. What I more care about is losing that momentum, losing my ability mm-hmm. to manage the account on the level that I've been managing it. I hate that we're having to stop. So I like lowering the budget because I can still keep that muscle going. And uh, Chris, there's so many parts of Google Ads that are kind of like feel for us, kind of experience mm-hmm. for us. And we're trying to communicate on the show some of that knowledge in a way people can digest. Mm-hmm. On this one, the overall momentum and muscle memory Ads, yeah. for a long time Google Ads account, we can, can we we can't teach that. All we can tell you is it's a real thing, and you feel like a master Jedi, like uh, you feel like you have superpowers managing an account. You just have ultimate confidence, like you know exactly what moves to make when problems come up. You anticipate them. You know how to handle them, and. It's hard to explain, but you definitely get into that flow state mm-hmm. uh, with long-time accounts. And if you turn them off, totally messes you up. And have you ever been in the spot where they turn it off and then you don't, you never get the magic back? Mm-hmm. I've been there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I've had I've had clients that uh, that have come back, you know, after you know a certain amount of time, and somebody else had been managing it, and they they, they, they let's say they built a great campaign. They built something that was more complex and more detailed than me. But you know what they did? They paused the old campaign. They built a new one, paused the old one, and immediately started tanking. 
their CPCs were, were higher, their results were lower, the quality was maybe the same, but they something about it, something mysterious about it was not working. I've had that happen plenty of times, and you're exactly right. It's not anything we can show. It's some magical feel that that just happens to a campaign with momentum. It's absolutely a real thing. And that, and that's our, on our side. And then the other factor is quality score. And I've found that I've, I've probably become a master of dealing with the variances of quality score and the, and the kind of feel you have to tiptoe around quality score because I live with Cynthia and she's like quality score. You don't exactly know what's going on in there. <laughs> But you know it can ruin your day if you do it wrong. You know what I'm saying, Chris? Oh, my gosh. That is... Why is she in a bad mood today? I didn't do anything. Oh, wait. I'm not going to overreact. It could be something else. She's dealing with a lot. I'm, I'm going to be polite. And we're going to get through this. I'm going to keep everything level-headed for the whole household. And... That's beautiful. We have a good quality score of household going on. Have you... <laughs> you, you do you equate a wife to quality... I, dealing with your wife to quality score? Have you ever thought that before? I, You've never thought that before? No. Really? No, I'm kidding. No, I, I just thought of it that's, myself. That's but isn't it a good analogy? I think we just started a new podcast. Marriage counseling for Google Ads managers. Guys, specifically guys, because I can't talk in girl language, but for guys that are married, yeah. that r- manage Google Ads, we talk in Google Ads language so they can interpret it and apply it to their wife. <laughs> I think that's great. Like if I came up with uh, an article or a course or something or on that podcast specifically about quality score how to deal with quality score it's just me and cynthia in a field and opposed marriage picture it's like what does that have to do with quality score it has everything yeah. to do with quality yeah. score so my point is sometimes i'm like you know why is she mad oh you have a low hey, it's got nothing score. to do with me or here, here's a good marriage one chris quality score is complaining the wife is complaining oh no no they don't want you to try to fix this situation they just want you to listen <laughs> Quality score is having a bad week. Don't overreact. Yeah, don't mess don't things change up. Anything. Just let it run through its cycle. Just let it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let it run and quality score will fix itself. Google Ads quality score is a woman. I've stumbled onto something yeah. here, Chris. Google Ads quality I've, score is I've a woman. It's a, it's a mystery. Here. Don't overfigure it. Don't try and fix it. <laughs> and it can make you or break you. No, here's the thing with quality score, Chris. And the reason I think I equate it to uh, being a husband and all that. We talk about on our side, the momentum and the muscle memory for that account. Well, if we do one thing wrong, come home two in the morning smelling like a stripper, what, that, okay. glitter on her clothes. That's, that's, Why is she so mad? more than one thing. What did I do wrong? <laughs> okay. I tripped and fell. Hey. I tripped and fell into a hey, dumpster. relax, Cynthia. Um, no, it's like we do one little thing wrong. Like I forget to take the trash out. It's World War Three over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We do one little thing wrong with the Google Ads account. We pause for a week. Mm-hmm. Mystery quality score gets mad yep. and it doesn't forgive you. And here's the thing. Maybe sometimes it does. Maybe sometimes it doesn't. But all I know and all I can tell you is if you mess with quality score, if you mess with momentum, anything could happen with quality score. Mm-hmm. And there's... I don't have much control over it. I don't know what's going on there. All I know is it's a real thing is if you if you do something stupid and pause your account, you may lose that momentum and that momentum has partly to do with us as Google Ads managers, but it also has probably a lot to do with quality score and stuff we can't understand. Would you agree with that yeah. theory? That's great. I love it. Yeah. So what I what I want to know is what's the alternative? So I agree with you. I'm with you. Let's not pause it. What's, okay. what's the alternative? So I'm glad I I'm glad I convinced you to slow your roll and not pause things. Now, number one, the mindset, Chris, and I think this is just genius. Whatever we do, whatever we talk about from here on <clears throat> the rest of the show, how to slow your roll, you always want to be able to trace back your steps and get back to mm. the same exact position yeah. you were in before we started. Do you like that kind of mindset going into these temporary changes? Absolutely. Yep. So how do you do it? It's all about, at the end of the day, let's work backwards. What, what's the goal here? The goal is to cut spend and not hurt performance. It's all about cutting spend. So what are some ways we cut spend? And we're going to talk about the pros and cons and how we do it. Less hours of the day. Chris, client comes to you and says, hey, we need to lower our budget by 40%. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're running 24-7. Maybe they're running just business hours. What's your mindset? Mm-hmm. And do you think cutting the hours of the day 
are there pros to that, cons to that, and then, then how would you do it? I, I love how that. How would you determine what days? I'm imagining a client that has conversion tracking, of course, and then I take uh, some of the best hours and block it into, you know, I, I block the day into four sections and decide which of those four sections, you know, which three-hour section is the best, and I just advertise in those three hours. And, of course, I need to adjust budget so that it still spins the right amount, but if I drop that down to just a quarter of what they were running before, boom, you know, we've dropped it significantly, 75%. So you're looking at a, you're looking at a, a day of the week report, a, or in this case, a time of day report. Mm-hmm. You're looking at conversion data, yeah. conversion rates or cost per conversion. What are you focusing on? Uh, I don't know. It depends on the client, depends on the goals, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, probably conversion rate because cost per conversion is always relative uh, you can always lower that by lowering the bids. So, but uh, yeah, but yeah. And someone would say, "Well, why does conversion rate? Why would that be different?" Well, think about it. If someone's doing a search at nine or ten in the morning and they're up, they're trying to knock off errands for their day. Mm-hmm. They're trying to schedule moves, whatever. They're ready to convert, become a leap. Someone's doing a search at seven o'clock at night. They're watching the Mask Singer. They do a search, then they're going to unveil the mask. Oh, maybe they they're forgot. not going to fill out that form. Yep. They're definitely not going to call in because it's late at night. Yep. So you look at the conversion rates, you look at the conversions, and the the biggest thing there, the biggest mistake you can make is giving too much weight to a short amount of data. So if you, like if you look back at the last two weeks and you're like, oh, we got conversions on this part of the day and not the other part of the day, may not be enough data. You, may, you want to make sure you're dealing with a, with enough data there. Now, I like that, Chris, hours of the day, and I like this next one, less days of the week. Because on both of these, it's very easy yep. to trace back your steps. That's true. Oh, we turned off the 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. block. Let's turn it back on. Oh, we decided Mondays were a very competitive day, high cost per click, high cost per conversion. We turned off Mondays. Okay, turn them back on. So they're very easy to get back to where you were. So the next one, less days of the week, someone's running an average of 20 business days a month, Monday through Friday, and they want to half their budget. Because they're convinced, because uh, they listen to the first part of this episode, they want to slow their roll. They don't want to turn things off completely. Do you like? Hey, you want to run uh, half the budget? We're going to run half the days. We're just going to cut days of the week. Do yeah. you like that as an option? Oh yeah, is that valid to you? Oh definitely, definitely. I think the the two things you want to accomplish go hand in hand. Um, for the solution here is because it's easily undoable. You can easily change it back and add schedule whether it's by day or by hour that is very easy to just turn right back on you did not touch bids you did not touch anything um except for day of the week and budget that's really the only thing you have to change and you know what i this this might be my favorite one less days of the week because you can get very clean data on the days of the week report Date different data on different days of the week makes sense intuitively to me. So like usually Mondays seem to be more competitive, Fridays less competitive, and that kind of follows itself as the week goes on with a lower cost per click. Um, and I also like that maybe you don't even have to mess with the daily budget or the bids. You just cut days of the week. Mm-hmm. You cut yep. days of the month yeah. by cutting days of the week. So the if you're running yeah, if you're running Monday through Friday, 20 days a month on average, and you cut Mondays and Tuesdays, now you're running 12 days a month, you're spending 60% of your budget just by default. Very simple change. And I have to say, some of you out there are thinking, well, I'll just pause it on the days I don't want it to run. I, you know, I, I, I won't use the ad schedule. I'll pause it. Absolutely not. There is a massive difference when you pause a campaign. Google does not interpret daily budgets the way they used to. When you had a $20 daily budget, they interpret it as $20. Now when you pause and turn it back on, they think, oh, I can make up for the time that, you know, if you pause it for two days and then turn it back on, they that's still within that quote unquote month time. It's not a calendar month, but it's a, cal- it's, it's a month in Google's mind of what they've spent all in the past 30 days. They will make up that spend. It is now, daily budget is now a very organic, a very moldable number. Do that and you're going to see that spend. Whoa, and then come back down. Whoa, every time you pause it and turn it back on, it's going to do that. So I think you're right, you're on the right track with ad schedule by far. Now here here's an interesting one, Chris. Fewer days of the month 
by shutting off for a couple weeks at a time. And I hear this from some, especially movers, where they get very busy at, at the end of the month. And so they don't want to run necessarily during the first part of the month to some extent. And I hate this one where they're like, hey, turn the ads off and then turn them on on the 15th day of the month. And that's the way we'll do have to budget. I get their argument, but the, the problem is Google Ads is not really set up for half months, mm-hmm. part months. It's it, Maybe one day they'll update their scheduling for that, but they're more set up for, hey, we're running a full month. Give us your weekly schedule and we'll apply that through the full month. And mm, what, what would you say if a client said, hey, I want to run this last two weeks of the month? Would you Are you willing to even do that for someone? Because I've got problems with that from a running a business perspective. Yeah. Just in terms of being a Google Ads manager. No, I... I... I, I don't really like the idea. I think it. Um, I think things like that tend to stem from the fact that they are doing one of two things. They are having two managers or two agencies or two lead generation systems compete against each other. So they think, oh, we'll have guy one run on these days and guy two run on the, these other days. No way. Anytime I hear things like that, a red yeah, flag. Yeah, Chris and I didn't sign up for Survivor. There's yeah. no million dollar payday. No, I'm not doing that. At the end of this show. No way. No, we're working in... Our office is trying to make money yeah. and try to feed our family. We're not here to be some contestants on your game show. Yeah, and f that. And, and Sorry, yeah, and and, but, and if they think you know, like, oh, we're gonna run radio. Maybe it's not that. Maybe they're running radio ads, and then they want to run this, and they want to judge, you know, which week has the best conversion rate. Stuff like you know, which when do we get the most calls out of these two? This is not the way to do it. You set up a lead tracking system for each and run them at the same time and measure the success. So most of the time, results, yeah. when I hear less days of the month, I don't. It's not a matter of me saying no. I don't like that ed- idea. I think red flag. We got something going on with this guy. He's shady. That's that's usually what I start thinking. Yeah, and there's no the the kind of mindset with Google Ads, especially where on any given day they can spend up to two hundred percent or whatever it is of your daily budget. Your budget's at ten dollars; they could spend thirty. Mm-hmm. I think that's the way it works. Sure. Um, and then they meter it out over the course of a month based on, like you were saying earlier, your schedule. Here's the thing, Chris: the mindset with Google Ads, just like the mindset is to not pause things, it's just to lower things if you need to spend less. It's all about continuation. Mm-hmm. And so yep. continually running, running a steady schedule, running every week, running every month to month. When you break that up in terms of we're only going to run the last week of the month or we're only going to run the second part of the month, that kind of goes against the whole system of Google Ads. So I'm not a fan of that either. Yeah. Chris, here's an interesting one. You want to spend less so you don't change anything. You just pause your campaign once you hit a certain amount of daily spend for the day. Mm. And then at the end of your schedule, you turn it back on and it runs the next day. So let's say your daily budget is, say it's a big account. Say your daily budget is $5,000, huge account. Okay. And you're running uh, a huge account. There's big advertisers that listen to the show. And you buy into the, the lowering thing, slow your roll, but... You don't. You really don't want to mess with things. And you go, okay. You know what? Instead of spending five thousand dollars a day, we're just going to spend fifteen hundred, and we're just going to shut things down once we spend fifteen hundred. Does that does that give you the ickies? What What do you feel about that one? Yeah, I. That stresses me out. I don't like that. Uh, may, maybe that's something you would be comfortable with. I don't. I don't like that. Um, if If let's say I'm forced to do something like that, I'm comfortable with everything. The way I would do something like that is I would set up a an automated rule that said, you know, check uh, at this time of day, and if they've spent this much money, then pause it. You know, um, I don't like the idea of me um, being responsible for pausing something based on a yeah. threshold being hit, you know, that's, that's just, it's, I don't like that. I've, I've done that before, Chris, and mm, on big accounts, I'm open to it. What generally happens when I go down that road is we get to a place where we change the budget a different way, whether it's yeah. a daily budget yeah. or where, whether it's running, like we were saying earlier, less hours of the day or fewer days of the week yeah. with a set schedule or just severely lowering our bids, which is an option we'll talk about. But what I found myself when I do that, we eventually start not automating is a, a loaded word here, but we start setting it up um, by default. The one problem with it, just a heads up to everybody out there, 
if you're looking at a Google Ads account intraday, inside of one day, uh, you may see $2,000 there spend. And then you may refresh for 30 minutes in a row and it's still at $2,000. And then you refresh that 10th time and you're at $5,500. Sometimes <laughs> that spend is not... Yeah real time and it comes in very heavily on you. So if you, the whole goal is to deposit $1,500, you may get to $1,400 and you're like, Hey, we're not there yet. It's time to pause, but we're not there yet. Or we're close to pausing. Then you'll refresh and you're at $2,200. And then all of a sudden you've overspent your budget by 50% that day. Yeah. How do you account for that the next day? So it, it is an, it's a doable option, but it kind of leads to its own problem. So Chris, let's take a break here. For Optio, and then we'll get into some very interesting ones, pruning keywords and lowering bids. All right, guys. You are listening to this show because you want to be better at Google Ads. You want to perform better. You want to get more clients. You want to free up time in your day. That's where Optio comes in. Optio is an online Google Ads software. There's a lot out there. Just search Google Ads software. You'll see all kinds of options. This is the only software that Jason and I use, have used in the past and use now. They have everything from automated uh, uh, suggestions. And these are, these are not just recommendations straight from Google. These are based on their recommendations within the software. Then they have uh, triggers based on certain metrics. If certain metrics start dropping or there's big differences in click-through rate for one ad or uh, spend on one keyword, cost per conversion on another keyword, time of day, devices, these are all triggers that are based on the metrics changing or being very different from the norm. All these are built in. Uh, and then they also have reporting and all kinds of stuff for, for agencies that really want to use an all-in-one tool. Great system. We highly recommend you check it out. OPTEO.com slash PSP2 for an eight-week free trial. To get the eight weeks, be sure and chat with them on their page and request that extra four weeks straight from your friends at Paid Search Podcast. Thanks, Chris. Now let's talk about one we haven't talked about yet where some people might be screaming at their... I podcast player i Chris. i can't believe you're going here because i was literally going to say jason this is great i love these ideas because all of this has to do with holding the integrity of the campaign and i was like perfect hey chris why don't before you diss my tips here at the end here why don't you let me read them because i think this one is okay. the most straightforward one you're you're misinterpreting it because i said it a different way earlier Lower your daily budget. There's people screaming at their podcast players. Okay. What's the most simple way to spend half the money, spend a quarter of the money, lower your daily budget? So I have a two-parter here. Number one, if someone tells you we want to spend money, isn't that the most valid, most kind of not messing with things, one of the most not messing with things options? Lower your daily budget. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that's fine. And 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 majority of time, I'd say, you know, maybe 60, 70% of the time, that's probably the direction to go. But the other options are really creative. I like, you know, I I like the other ones because they the main thing is they maintain the integrity of well, the Well, the other options about the schedule and about the days of the week and hours of the day, you're right, the integrity. And you don't mess with that daily budget. And here's one interesting thing about daily budget. I think daily budget has something uh I got to be careful the way I say this. Let me, I'm not going to use the quality score word. Sure, yeah. So forget I just said quality score. Right. But I do think about it that way. I think daily budget has something to do with the overall momentum. Momentum. Because I have a go. really, yeah. momentum. I have a really big mindset thing about daily budget, a real big focus on it compared to the cost per click. That's one of my biggest mm -hmm. focuses of Google Ads. When the daily budget gets too cold, too close to the average cost per click, even though there's no documentation or no rules on this or anything, it screws things up. You put in a $10 a day budget where the average cost per click is $38, $40, something's going to go wrong. It's just going to be difficult to manage. So I do look at daily budget in terms of momentum and in terms of not messing things up. So I like that those previous options, you're not messing with your daily budget. You're keeping that same momentum. Yeah. Um, but that said... It is a very easy thing to do. You want to spend a quarter of the money. You just take your daily budget down by a quarter. Now, here's where it gets a little messy. 
The whole goal with Google Ads usually is to get the most clicks possible for the budget. If you take your budget down by three-fourths and you don't touch your bids, you're probably going to be bidding more than you need to be. Oh, yeah. And you're probably going to be getting less clicks than you could get overall. Yeah. So here's the question, Chris. You lower your daily budget. Mm. Do you also lower your bids? Because if you do that, you're giving up on the past. That's the truth. Yeah, you're never going to get back to the same place you were on. Yeah. Or do you s- temporarily live with more less clicks than you could be getting overall because you're dealing with still that higher cost per click for that bigger budget that you may get back to? What would you do if a client said, hey, just for the next two months, I want to take my daily budget down by three-fourths? Would you drop the bids with it, or would you say, I'm going to leave the bids in place with the eye on the future? I'll tell you what I do is I lower the budget, and then I use device bids, and I drop the overall bids of all devices by 25 30 50%. That's what because that's easy so you, so you, cause that's wow. easy to change. I, where where do you get that advice? Where do you get that advice? I, from the greatest Google Ads manager it, in the world, me. You know what I love? <laughs> we need an archivist on the show because there's so many tips that I've when, when you give a tip and I use it like the automated extensions mm-hmm. you talked about on mm-hmm. Patreon last mm-hmm. week, I give you credit. Yeah. When I give you my best tips, the ones that are really good, time goes on. Uh, and they kind of cement themselves in your head, and you start to take credit for them, and Maybe. that's okay. But I am the one who came up with you device did? level bids. Did you? Oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't yeah, know. I, did. Yeah. I don't know. To I'm ma- gonna to have to. We're gonna have to go to the jury on that one. Perspective. That, I don't know. But okay. This is a this is a bench trial. Yeah. It's a it's, judge. Yeah. There I'm gonna no need. Jury, I'm gonna need some. I'm the judge. Some proof. Oh, you're the judge. <laughs> that's. I'm the that's judge. Not fair. And you're wrong. It's not fair. <laughs> Well, that's your that's your legal defense. That's not fair. Yeah, that's, well, not, that's fair. Not, not. No, it's not fair that you're the that you're the judge. I don't have a. All right. I don't have a de- you're you're making the judge very angry right oh, now. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well. And it, by the way, it's not you're the judge. It's your your honor. <laughs> We're almost. Should I start wearing a robe? No. For this show? Good hey, lord. Chris, no. Honestly. Okay. So what? <laughs> all right. So so I I love I love your tip there. That again, I originally thought of it. I didn't think about it in this context. You lower that daily budget, massive amounts, 80%, something like that. Mm-hmm. You might have to do something with the bids or you're not going to be getting the kind of results you like. Well, you don't want to miss with all those individual ad group and keyword bids that you've developed oh, over time. Definitely not. Yeah. Boom. Especially when you know it's going to be a temporary drop in the budget and it'll come back up. Boom. Device level bids, 50%, 80%, whatever you want to do. Yeah. You can adjust those day to day. You can always get back to where you were. It's one little change. Mobile, yep. tablet, computer. I love that tip, Chris. Now here's here's a final one. Ooh, this one's this one's messy. You, client wants to spend less money temporarily. They're buying into slowing things down, not turning mm. off. And not me, but a Google Ads manager or a business owner out there has the idea to prune their keywords and pause their higher volume keywords. That's terrifying. I've heard that idea. Mm. I don't like it. Either. I don't like it. Not not if it's a temporary thing. Sure, if the client's like, "Listen, we're gonna either we're gonna stop Google Ads or we're gonna have to drop a budget by half." Okay, panic, change things. Yep. But no, not if it's because, "Hey, I'm going on vacation for two weeks. Slow the bids, slow the budget. I am not changing my keywords if this campaign's profitable, uh, you know, and working well. Definitely not." I I agree. Now, Chris. Um, in Patreon, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the business aspects of managing Google Ads campaigns okay. uh, when clients want to slow things down. Just how to answer those kind of questions, how to lay out this thinking, and, and maybe what to do. Uh, what are some options people do with their pricing when clients just say, hey, I love running Google Ads with you, but I'm not going to do it for the next four months. Um, how to handle that. And then the second thing is, I have some massive news. I'm excited. About calls yeah. and Google Ads. Absolutely massive. Okay. I told you not to peek because no. I want your I don't know. Your instant reaction okay. and we're gonna get it. So we're gonna move over to Patreon. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for sharing the show, and we will be back next week with the next episode of the Paid Search Podcast.